Hi, everybody. This is Jeff Overturf with WTFRadio.me. I'm sitting here with Tom Seaborn. Tom, what have you got to tell everybody right now? Hey, Jeff. Good to hear from you. Yeah, today we're going to talk about the fact that there are no absolutes. And you'll hear that this program's better than that one, or this is the only one that'll work for everybody. And, and there's no one program that works for everybody. And in my opinion, from what I've seen, uh, there are so many different programs that can work for different individuals depending on where their needs and goals are at the time. For example, eating programs. You know, you, you hear about this diet's better than that diet. Well, some people have problems with carbs. Other people will gain more fat when they eat more fat because that's nine calories per gram. So it, it's going to depend on the individual. Strength training, we hear that, wow, you've got to train your fast twitch type 2 B fibers. Well, if that person has more endurance fibers, the, the, the red fibers, the type 1 fibers, then they're going to respond more effectively to more repetitions and less weight. And then when we talk about stretching, there are so many different types of stretching techniques. There's holding the stretch, calling static stretch. There's bouncing through a stretch called ballistic. There's dynamic where you're actually moving through a stretch like an athletic move. There's PNF where you have a partner helping you. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it. And you'll hear all these, quote, experts touting that their way is the best way, when in fact everybody's going to find their own way. You know, we're, we're all different. We're all biologically different. We all will respond differently to different types of activity. And that includes being able to handle pain. What I found recently, Jeff, as I'm getting older and as we're all getting older, that you know, some things are starting to fall apart. Like uh, I was told <laughs> recently, actually on a TLC show, that I need a hip replacement because I have bone on bone, uh, you know, femur against acetabulum. There's no cartilage left. So uh, I've been doing everything, kicking and streaming, not to get the, in my opinion, barbaric hip replacement. And I finally, found, you know, I've, I've, I've looked into everything: acupuncture, uh, physical therapy. So for, for two years, I've been trying different ways, and some work for a while, and then they don't work after a while. And, and what I found recently, and it's actually a device out of a uh, place in Dallas, the device is called Avazia, A-V-A-Z-Z-I-A. And this is like the old TENS units, except it's a, it's a microcurrent that it's, it's different than a TENS unit. I'm wearing it right now. And for some reason, Jeff, this is keeping the pain at bay. I know that I'm going to eventually need something like a hip replacement, but I'm waiting for maybe a stem cell deal or something that's less barbaric than the hip replacement. So in the meantime, this device is keeping the pain away. Is this and a, I'm able to move functionally. Go ahead. Is it the electronic stimulant? It's like a little battery pack, and it has these uh, – is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it's similar to a TENS unit, the, the old trans cutaneous electronic, those units that everybody used to use for pain management, which those worked on what's called the gate control theory, which means that uh, it's not allowing those pain signals to reach your central nervous system, that instead you'll feel the, the vibration of the device. Um, but this w works on a different mode, and it's, I, I think everybody should just look at it. I, the best way people can find out about it is to just email this guy who, who just emailed me all the information on it. And after getting the information, my doctor's prescription uh, covered most of it, most of the cost. I, I only had to pay a little bit out of pocket. And uh, I, I'm excited. I've been using it for about a month right now, and I, I would love to hear some of your viewers' comments. But this guy's name is Dan, and you could email him at dan at Avazia, A V A Z Z I A dot com, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, Dan at Avazia dot com. Well, for, yeah. my, for the listeners not aware of this, Tom was an AAU champion in uh, martial arts and taekwondo, and he's been doing taekwondo for his whole adult life. I mean, so that, how many years? Uh, nearly 40 yeah, well, years. Well, actually, you're, you're right. Since I was 11. And, and so what's going on is that uh, we, as you know, Jeff, we, we did some moves and training that probably wasn't the best thing for our joints, and now we're paying the price. I, I'm sure a lot of your friends, like a lot of mine who've been training the martial arts for years, have, have done the hip replacement. And 
some of these folks are telling me they're saying, Tom, the the worst thing I did was wait so long to get the hip replacement right. done, meaning going through the pain. You know, Bill Wallace so had I'm, it done. Bill Wallace had his sure, done. But, yes, Bill Wallace had both of them done, and <laughs> and he he couldn't be happier. And, right. And you're right. I I just. I can't bring myself to do it, Jeff. I well, just, you remind uh, me of him. Both of y'all are, are like birds of a feather. He's into a kinesiology, a teacher, worked at a university. Um, he was a champion like you are, of course, Superfoot Wallace. And uh, oh, he rehabbed, yeah. he rehabbed you, himself. You will probably do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, definitely one of my heroes growing up. I mean, his Superfoot, that left leg was unstoppable. Uh, you know, and, and here's you know, getting back to our topic. You know, I get to, I got to meet him in Mississippi at a tournament one day, and I asked him, "What do you eat?" Now, remember, uh, we're told right now to eat fruits and vegetables, lean meat, drink lots of water. Well, he told me at that time, and I forget it was like in the 70s or 80s. He said all he eats is hamburgers. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I mean, you know, and he, he you saw him. He's a very muscular and right. you know, very well conditioned athlete. I don't know if he's still eating just hamburgers, but I mean, I, that's where I ate two of them yesterday. <laughs> I had yeah. two hamburgers yesterday. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying not to have hamburgers, but in fact, uh, I, I eat a lot of red meat myself. And, and, and looking back, the point is that there are no absolutes. That's what worked for him. And obviously he was a super world champion and did, he was the best at what he did. So yeah, each of us has to look, for whatever is going to get us to that next level, regardless of what the world says. And sometimes we have to take it into our own hands and do our own research. And maybe sometimes not even listen to the doctor. Uh, you know, listen to several doctors, see what they say, and then do your own research and find out what's best for you and your body. Right. Well, I agree 100% with that. Um, you know, I, you know, Finding out what your niche is, like I, I just went got back from the doctor recently on my three-year checkup after cancer, and I had chronic kidney disease on the kidney I had left. I lost the other one to cancer, and uh, they right. said that my kidney had improved, and I thought that was kind of shocking because when you have chronic kidney disease, it doesn't usually improve, and uh, mm -hmm. mine did. So its efficiency and its uh, filtering process got better. Now, why or huh. how, I have no idea. But, you know, I'm, you right. know, and I think high blood pressure medication has a lot to do with it. And, uh, right. and then a calcium blocker also that helps out a lot. And then my diet, adding yeah. the uh, fruits and vegetables and stuff like that to my diet helped out also. I hope, yeah, at I least mean, I think it did. You're, you're, you're saying something very important that, you know, many times we do require medication to fix whatever is going on. And then some of us, uh, again, go kicking and screaming away from the medication, trying any alternative therapy that doesn't require medication. But obviously, in your case, you needed it. And so we have to be discerning enough and do our own study to find out what is going to work best for us. So congratulations on that. Absolutely. Yeah, well, the kidney uh, is one of the uh, uh, organs that regulate your blood pressure. And when you lose a kidney, then your body has to compensate uh, for that lack of control. So you, in other words, and high blood pressure kills your internal organs. So it's something yeah. you have to get a grip on, or you're going to lose, I'll lose my one kidney. So that's not like I have a choice. I'll do whatever it takes uh, to get that going right. on. And for everybody's information out there, the cheapest pay to place to buy your meds is Costco. And I've been through every place. It is dirt cheap compared to everywhere <laughs> else. Instead of paying a hundred dollars a month, you pay like $9 a month. So it's that dramatic. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk wow. a little bit more about uh, there's no absolute fix for uh, any one person. Uh, and describe the different types of people that, um, in your opinion, that how do, you, how do you decide for you? Well, for example, if you look around, there's what are called ectomorphs, which are skinny people, endomorphs, which are more heavy set, and then mesomorphs, which are kind of muscular, you know, V-shaped people. So... All of them will require different diets, different physical activity, and they should do things differently according to their body type. And then cardiovascularly, we're all different too. We just watched the Tour de France, and all those guys train differently. You know, they all have these team leaders, and every team leader feels like they've got the best program to reach their razor-thin peak by the time the Tour de France comes. 
And interestingly, uh, some of them are trained by these notorious Italians that supposedly uh, got them into the or oh, I don't want to bring up the, the drugs, but we've seen it in all the previous tours, and we're hearing about all the problems with some of the current leaders of uh, the Tour de France that drugs were involved. That, the, the diuretic you know, the, on that the, one guy, they kicked him out because he no, was no, mo- no, no, mostly uh, what they'll take, what cyclists will take are EPO, which helps uh, increase the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, increases red blood cells, but what happened there, Jeff, I mean, there were, I'm trying to remember exactly, 11 heart attack victims, and these these cyclists were only in their 20s, and there were like, oh, I think there were 11 heart attacks in one year from taking EPO. What, what EPO does is it, it's kind of a, think of your blood circulation, you know, it should be moving rapidly through your body, but at night, what happens when you take EPO, it, it stagnates. And then these guys had heart attacks, and again, in their 20s, in their early 30s. And so this is one of the banned substances that cyclists take. They take anabolic steroids uh, in order to recover faster. Uh, they do blood doping, which just means that they'll reinfuse their own blood after having a transfusion. You know, they'll take their blood out, and then, then they'll reinfuse it, which gives them more blood, red blood cells to get more oxygen to the muscles. So they'll have a so transfusion any, during a meet or before or how? Yeah, before and during because it's really hard to detect that. Uh, in other words, the, the anti-doping agencies, they'll, it's hard to, to figure out if people are actually doing that. So that's one that's easier to cover up. So, yeah, all of these different strategies are used to get that edge to win the Tour de France or you know to do well in it. And, and as you know, Athletes at the higher levels, like Olympians and high-level professionals, and in fact, one survey was done, and this is an amazing survey. Uh, Olympians were asked, if you could win a gold medal in the Olympics, but in doing so, by taking this drug, you would die five years later, would you still take the drug? And 95% of these surveyed said yes. Oh, I'm sure. In order to win that gold. Yeah. They would, they would, they would just to win a gold. They would, they would do it, and knowing that they would die five years later. So it's kind of scary. People will do anything to win, and you know, when we when we look around, now there's all these different diets and and, and scam programs that are promising results. So we have to be really careful when we do our research. Make sure that what we're doing isn't more harm than good. Well, I agree with that, uh, and you, and it has a residual, long term build up and effect also, especially when it comes to your diet. You know, the number one cause yeah. of death, people don't realize in nutrition or nutrition related illnesses, uh, lack of yeah. oxygen yeah. in your blood, um, you know, nutrients, you know, fresh nutrients, vitamins that come from your food. And, uh, people are knocking the only people that knock supplements are the uh, FDA and the drug companies. And they have, yeah. they have an, a, a, an agreement or they have a business relationship monetarily that dictates, well, if all these people are exercising, eating right and taking drugs, then we don't get our cut. Then, you know, then, then the hospitals aren't full. You know what I mean? So they don't want it to happen. Yeah. Well, and that, that's the point earlier about trying to get off pharmaceuticals if we can. But of course, in your case, you have to keep taking some of those to keep those kidneys functioning. But right. for the rest of us, if, if we can look at whole foods, uh, as we discussed, the fruits and vegetables that aren't packaged, lean meats, drinking lots of water, all that, instead of uh, you know relying on pharmaceuticals and processed foods, then uh, we'll be a little bit healthier and probably live a lot longer as well. Well, hey, I appreciate you giving us a tip today. You're always – and everybody out there, me and Tom did a segment on um, – about – being sedentary and sitting down all day is worse than smoking. And then I saw it on TV last week and it was a couple of months after me and Tom had discussed it on my show. I was so tickled to death. I said, Tom knows he's ahead of the curve. He knows what's going on. And now they're just now, pub- the now they're just now publicizing it. You know what I mean? It takes that long for it to get out through the grapevine, I guess. You're right, Jeff, and uh, we're at the cutting edge. And that, and that was what that, my latest book is exactly, that's why we wrote it. It's called 
the quick, uh, the complete idiot's guide to quick total body workouts because it gets people moving even at the office. Like we discussed, you can't sit all day long. If you do, then you're at much higher risk for obesity, heart disease, and diabetes. So you've got to get moving. And the, the book just shows people how to move all day long. Well, hey, I appreciate it, Tom. Thanks very much. And I'll be giving you a call back next week, and we'll get another tip, okay? All right. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Good talking to you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.